Okay. Hello friends, this is Yusuf here. Welcome to the second part of ILE tutorial. Uh, so in this video, we're going to see a little bit further on uh, about uh, external program and external procedure. So how do we call this from a uh, RPG LE free format? Okay. Uh, yeah. So the example, what we are going to take is how can we call the CL commands or the system commands from the RPG LE? So that is the objective here. And we are going to do it uh, in two different ways. One is the traditional way of Q CMD XC. So that is a program system program called Q command exit using which we can call the system commands, right? So we can pass two parameters one with the uh, first parameter is actually the command and the second parameter is actually the length of the command and the other way of doing it is actually we have a API called a system. Okay, it was from the C program written in C program. Okay, that is available in the binding directory called uh, QC 2 LE. Okay, we're gonna try those two options and trying to understand uh, plus and minus also how the ILE is playing a part here okay so i'm just having a blank program here so first let me quickly copy paste few lines of code so okay so i'm just declaring the first one okay so here what we are doing is we are making a procedure for this program and we are telling that it's an external program and the name of the external program okay and then it takes two parameters that's what we're defining in here and also the constant keyword is important i'll explain what okay so now it says that it takes two parameters one first parameter is, is actually the string which takes the command second is actually the length of the command so if you want to execute this quickly so what i can do uh, so here either i can do something like this so i can have a variable separately like command and it could be my standalone variable of length whatever i want right and then here i can say command equal to display system status output start print okay so here i can say that uh, exec cl command which is my procedure name i take two parameters one is the command so trim of command colon second is actually the length of frame of command right so this is uh, closing of this closing of this closing of this okay so what we will do it will just execute the thing so if i compile all so it's done so if you go to work job from bottom you will see the uh full fill okay because we executed it fine so since it's a constant right we can also do one more thing which means it will accept the value directly as a parameter so we don't need to use one more variable here okay so which means i can do something like this so I can take directly oh, sorry so i can do like this okay basically it's a string colon then maybe the length okay, this will work as well okay fine now okay let's come back to the other thing so this is the way to execute the CL programs or CL commands in RPG LE using QCMDXC. Now let's see the other way of executing the same thing uh, using the system uh, procedure. Okay, so I'm gonna just take two give file RPG 002A. So it will create another member with the same thing. So here what we are going to do, we're gonna take this thing and put it here. So basically we don't want the other thing okay so one good thing is system is it doesn't need the second parameter of length okay you can just pass the uh, value directly so before we go to that right let, let's try to understand so here i am telling again here uh, syscall is my procedure uh, basically it's an external proc okay it's not pgm it's proc and you can see it's a, a lower case that is important because the procedure is exposed as a lower case only it's a case sensitive okay so uh, 
since is external proc right so i should tell to this uh, program where to find that okay so where it is available the next question so if you go to display binding directory qc2le the system one you can see the first service program okay so display srv pgm you will see that uh, this procedure is exposed in the service program so as a simplicity what i am going to do uh, i am just going to tell that uh, see you can bind the directory of qc2l 2le okay so this will automatically this program will be able to see that uh, system procedure okay so the next thing is actually uh, the parameter it accepts actually a pointer uh, okay of the variable of string right so here we don't need even the command okay so delete this one so here we cannot say that uh, sys call okay and pass only one parameter and that's it okay cool so since we are doing a binding directory here right so we should tell that uh, default activation group is star no as well okay so file okay so if you want to call rpg 002a then if you go to work job shift f6 you'll be able to see the system status okay cool so now we just learned how this two different approach of uh, doing the same thing okay now let's try to understand the advantages and disadvantages okay so now it seems good you might think that okay uh, here i take two parameters but there we take only one parameter and that seems to be simple okay but i'll tell the problem of the system uh, call okay so instead of here i'm going to say one more thing like uh, dltf qtmpa okay so i'm issuing a delete file command uh, i'm telling you need to delete a file in qtemp called a okay but the thing is there is no file called qtemp a okay so i'm just going to compile this one and call rpg 002a so you see the program executed without showing anything okay so i don't find any error message or anything like that okay that's one problem with respect to the system uh, call so if we try to do the same thing in our traditional way so here if we say that uh, dltf qtemp a and it also accepts the length parameter okay so this can be more than this also that doesn't matter so file call rpg002 so if you see it it is going to a message wait or it is showing the error message that there is no file called a okay so if you use qcmdxe you are able to handle the messages properly now the question is okay in that case can't we do the same with the system api so there could be some work around right yes there is one work around so basically if you see if you look into the prototype carefully right so we have a 10i0 here so if you learned from my earlier video if you are defining uh, uh, something here on the procedure which means it's a return variable which means this procedure uh, is returning a value okay so let's try to understand what is that so what i'm going to do i'm going to create one variable so which means we can do something like this rtn code okay because it's going to return one uh, variable called return code and i can define this rtn code as a standalone variable of the same declaration of 10i0 so now uh, we have this variable so here i'm going to do uh, two things so first of all i'm going to execute one correct statement one wrong statement okay just to differentiate this so same thing what we can do here uh, display system status output star print this will execute correctly because nothing wrong so i can say display rtn code and after executing a wrong statement i can see a display command. okay let's file this one compile call rpg 002a now if you see the first display is giving the answer zero second is giving one because now we can see the second statement there is some error 
okay but it is not logging what is the error but it is telling there is some error so if there is some error how to get the message id so the message id is nothing but if i try to do a dltf q temp slash a it will say object not found if you take f1 you will see the message id is 2104 okay so how to get this message id or how to find what is the error when you are doing with the system call okay for that there is one option that option is called uh, import variable okay so that procedure is also uh, in, uh, exporting one variable which we can again import into the program here so let me declare that so it's again the standard variable of seven length i'm just saying it's an import of some predefined uh, structure so this is there inside the program okay fine so now here after i display right i can do a display of err msg id okay let's see what happens file call rpg 002 a so now if you see we are getting the message id here okay so we are able to find uh, if the system command executed correctly or not based on the written uh, variable and uh, the the export variables also giving us the message id which can be then imported into our program okay this is all with respect to the system api commands right now let's try to do the same thing in qcmdxe so how we can do the same in qcmdxe so before that right here we are calling the program directly right so because it's a procedure so you can have a parenthesis we can also do something like call p so it is actually the call p is an optional one which you can use or don't use but in some cases we have to use it so let me tell you in which cases so say for example here if i try to do this delete file you know what will happen it will go to the message byte or throw some error so i have also another thing called e okay so extender called e so this is will this will monitor for any errors so i have just added this e now let's see what's going to happen okay so again i'm going to compile call rpg002 so this time it executed without giving the alert right but if we take the job log you should be able to see that the program is logging the uh, message in the job log okay the difference between system and qcmdx is that will not log the message into the job log but this qcmdx will log it okay okay this is one advantage but what if if you want to get the same message id those things uh, in the qcmdx okay so that is also there is a one way so we're going to do that now so let me quickly do that so if you want to explain it right so the program that okay this program currently is running under what uh, our q inter subsystem right so q in uh, the job okay so you all know about this uh, system data structure right sds so let me create that one so something like the psds f4 so it's going to be yes ds okay you know sds means the system data structure so it will give the state of the program okay so this command or the program will pass in the message id and uh, message description into a specific field okay so that field let me quickly take that one so this is the field from 40 to 46 the id will be there 91 to 170 the description will be there so which means i can also do something like this once you have this e indicator right uh can this error will be switched on okay it will work like like how we are doing percentage if found or not found okay like that if we have an error then if percentage error will be switched on you will get the routine uh, control into that loop okay into that block so here we can exception handling whatever you want you can do but here what i'm going to do i'm going to say display of uh, msg id so i'm just going to display the message id and if i want to display the message text i'll get an error because this display keyword or the command can display a maximum of 52 length character string okay it cannot display the whole thing so here if you see the message text is actually more than uh, 80 length so what i'm going to do uh, just i'm going to do a, a substring of message 
one to fifty. So I'm just trying to display the first fifty so that it is not it will not show any error. Okay. Okay, let's do a file in call RPG002. Now you can see the display command is giving us the data, the ID and also the description. Okay, that's how you will be handling it error with respect to QCMDXE. Okay, so one final thing which I want to cover is um, uh, okay. So if we are declaring in this manner, then you cannot declare another variable like this with the same name message ID. Okay, it will when we are trying to compile it, it will say that this is already declared. Okay, so but if you want to have like this, then we need to declare the DS as qualified. Once you say qualified, right? This message ID we cannot refer directly we have to refer with the ds name which means like this psds dot message id okay so this is just an additional information which i wanted to tell okay so now we have just seen the two different ways of executing seal commands one with the ex external pgm other with external procedure and we saw some advantages and disadvantages so it's up to you guys to use whatever you feel like good but uh, before i finishing it i'm going to give uh, one more use case uh, let me see if that works okay call qp2 term system display system status Right. So this is what I want to show. So the system API even will work in the shell command. So in the shell command, you can try to display or not display, try to execute some of the uh, CL commands that will even work with respect to the system API. So yeah, that's the end of this video. So I make this as a part two of ILE because uh, we were just seeing the difference between the external PGM and procedure and we saw how this call P and call PE works. Okay. And uh, similarly, there are other questions like when to use call or call B, call P. Okay. Those things. Maybe we'll try to cover those things in the future videos. Uh, maybe the next video in this series will be the service programs and uh, its uses. And uh, yeah, so I, I'm trying to cover uh, bits and pieces of the early concepts in the whole series. So it may not be a very short series to just to explain the theoretical portion of it. Okay. So I hope this really helps you. And thanks for all your support uh, on the YouTube. And I'll see you in the next video with a different concept. Thanks for watching.